Elon Musk just revealed a deadly mystery about the sun. Even though a powerful solar storm could destroy the internet, space weather forecasts would at least give us a day or two to prepare. Or perhaps not, as scientists have recently identified a brand new type of solar storm that attacks without warning. Are we prepared for the next catastrophic solar storm? Let's find out as Elon Musk updates us all. Hello everyone and welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos. And let's dive in. According to Musk, more than 150 years have passed since the largest geomagnetic storm ever seen. At this time, the sun is at its highest intensity. When Richard Carrington and Richard Hodgson saw an extraordinary event in 1859, it was simply another September night. The two British scientists were not present at the same time, but they both happened to be looking through telescopes at the sun at the precise instant that a large ejection shot out of the blazing star. Within a few days, other people on Earth observed telegraph cables, the most cutting-edge technology at the time in Europe and North America, erupting in sparks and brilliant aurora swarming the skies. One of the two astronomers who originally described the solar flare gave it the name Carrington Event, which came to be known as that event. It remains the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded, despite taking place more than 150 years ago, though we lack measurements to say precisely how big it was. Since then, there have been a few severe geomagnetic storms that have affected Earth, all of which have led to power outages and satellite damage. Consequently, resistance has been included into our technology by satellite and electricity businesses. What would happen, though, if a solar flare of the magnitude of the Carrington event occurred today? Could we handle it? The answer, according to Alexa Halford, Associate Chief of the Heliophysics Science Division at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, is a circumspect yes. Though we've made progress, she acknowledges that there is still more to learn. When the sun flares, it releases electromagnetic radiation. These spurts typically only last a few minutes, although they can also occasionally continue much longer. Coronal mass ejections, which spew magnetic fields and gas, are occasionally linked to them. On Earth, however, not every solar flare or coronal mass ejection will have an effect. This depends on the size of the burst and the direction it is traveling in. It's doubtful that we would be affected by a solar flare that happens on the sun's far side, for instance, Musk stated. Even if it does occur on the near side because of our distance from the sun and the fact that we are a relatively small target, the burst frequently misses us in our direction. A coronal mass ejection, which travels at a speed of around 4.5 million miles per hour, was created in 2001, for instance, when one of the greatest solar flares ever recorded erupted into space. Fortunately, on its route into space, it swiftly passed by us. Even while technology at the time of the Carrington event in 1859 was rather basic, it still had a significant impact on telegraph lines. At the time, unplugging the cables was the only way to stop the sparks from exploding from them. However, they continued to function in part because of the flares expelled particles, which hit the line's current. According to Musk, they literally had to disconnect them, and they still had enough energy and currents to operate for a while. Naturally, Earth has been affected by solar flares in the past. In 993 AD, there was a solar storm. Ancient wood products, such as those from the short-lived Viking presence in the Americas, still have traces on their tree trunks that archaeologists can use to date them. Despite not being as massive as a Carrington event, a second huge solar flare occurred during World War I that nonetheless baffled detecting technology. When the flare reached the magnetosphere, Technicians mistakenly thought bombs were dropping when, in reality, interference was occurring. In March 1989, Earth was just hit by a powerful coronal mass ejection, and the ensuing geomagnetic storm left the planet in critical peril. The utility company Hydro-Quebec was down for nine hours as a result of the flare, which also knocked out the electricity grids in sections of New England and Quebec. Due to an overload of electricity in the grid, power transformers even started to melt. Infrastructure planners began to take notice after that incident in 1989. According to Musk, those are the kinds of things from which we have truly learned a lesson. To prevent cascading failure, power companies started incorporating safety features into the electrical system, such as tripwires. These tripwires are set to turn off if power climbs too quickly in order to reduce damage and prevent transformer burnouts, like in 1989. The geomagnetic storm that rocked Earth in October as a result of a solar flare's coronal mass ejection and geomagnetic storm also caused 
exhaust bit flips, surface charging, and interior charging to satellites orbiting our planet. Because they do not benefit from the relative shelter of our atmosphere, satellites are extremely vulnerable. However, the majority of satellites that have been launched in the last 20 years have been constructed with enough durability to withstand overcharging. When ionized solar outburst particles switch the function of memory bits, bit flips take place. For GPS satellites, which have an impact on everything from navigation to precision drilling, this can lead to serious issues. Even banking uses GPS satellites to control transaction time. According to Musk, that kind of failure would substantially harm the economy. It's significant and obviously something about which we should be concerned. Despite the fact that the satellites are now more durable, it's said that it's doubtful that a storm will knock out enough GPS satellites to cause many more significant issues. Power cycling the problematic device or simply restarting it will sometimes solve these issues. The Federal Aviation Administration didn't notice any significant navigational problems, but the October flare did cause a few minor concerns according to Musk. Large solar flares can have positive effects as well as negative ones. The density of the upper atmosphere of the Earth increases when these things happen. It it has the effect of temporarily raising the atmosphere's altitude. This may have an adverse effect on satellite orbits, which may result in issues, but it may also have an adverse effect on the orbits of any space debris that may be present in the upper atmosphere. This trash may tumble into orbit and burn up as a result of the increased drag. To naturally remove some of the material, we need some storms, Musk explains. It could, however, have a double-edged effect, because the incident might also contribute to the orbital decay of any equipment that is now in operation there. The greater visibility of aurora is another potential benefit for people on Earth who live closer to the equator. When sun particles interact with gas particles as they reach the atmosphere, northern lights and southern lights are produced. Typically, this occurs at the poles, where the magnetic field is weaker. However, more of the particles enter the atmosphere during solar flares. During the recent solar storm in October, New Yorkers were able to see the Aurora Borealis. As we get closer to a solar maximum, which happens every 11 years or so, and is when solar activity is at its peak, these opportunities will only grow. We will have a lot more opportunities to witness the Aurora in the next years, which should make for some truly exciting times, according to Musk. Another large solar flare could possibly occur at this time, and Musk claims that it will be an opportunity to test how well our safety procedures and preparations can handle this onslaught of solar particles. But don't hold your breath. According to a 2019 analysis, there's a less than a 1.9% chance that something similar to the Carrington event would happen before 2029. And according to Musk, a Carrington event is one of those kinds of things that you kind of want to happen because we think we can weather it. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click on the like button and make sure you share it with all your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments for us, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll see even more of our incredible videos. And you can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected just for you. Hey, and we'll catch up with you in our next video. Thanks for hanging out with us today and we'll do it again soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.